Japanese is known for a difficult language to learn. One of the reasons why it's difficult is in grammar rules. In this video, I'm going to explain how many grammar rules can be used in one sentence and how native Japanese speakers differentiate those. Here we go. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm a trainee of professional Japanese teacher. So today, we're going to be focusing on just one grammar that nobody tells you about, and that is... There's many ways to make a sentence, but everybody teaches you just one of them. What do I mean? So, in most of any languages, simple sentences only have one grammar structure. For example, I study Japanese. I am studying Japanese. I was studying Japanese. Noun, be verb, verb, and object in English, but this structure cannot be changed. And I guess this is the same way you learn Japanese. But when it comes to the particular sentence in Japanese, it has a few ways to structure the grammars, but they're all correct. Let's dig in that part. Nikuga. This is the basic grammar structure in Japanese. Noun, object, adverb, and verb. But in this sentence, there are five more ways to structure. So number one is this. And number two. Number three is Number four Number five and the last one is It all means Nick opens the door slowly, but they are all correct. And they are all same meaning, but grammar structure is different. When it comes to Japanese, you actually don't have to care about where you put the adverb in a sentence if you know a rule. Adverb have three kinds: conditional, degree, and correspondence. To conditional adverb, this means it modifies a verb to express how the verb is looked like or explain how the verb is taking action. Degree adverb it modifies the next word to express what it states. And correspondence adverb means that a certain phrase or expression is used in connection with it. If it's a degree adverb, it only comes before the adjective that you want to make the mean stronger, like very, so, little, small, something like that. And correspondence, it's kind of different thing. And the rule that I mentioned earlier is these word orders. It only applies when the translated verb sentence that has noun and object. In a natural sentence that has its name or things and the object. And this is the reason why you get confused when you read or listen to what the native Japanese speaker says. It's difficult to learn, but also it's practical to use, so you don't have to worry about making mistakes because there's many ways to express the thing. And just to know, the basic grammar is number one. And other grammars, there's the same meaning, but also there's other practical meanings if you pronounce differently or the meaning can have the extra meaning depending on the context. Okay, now here's the question of the day. What is the hardest moment in your Japanese studying journey? 
let me know in the comments below. Alright, if you got a value out of this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any upcoming lesson with tips and also the special offers that help your learning. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Arigatou!